now we have people that are like how can we take the boxes off the ships at our port it's so hard how do we take the boxes off the ships that are at our ports already oh no what a crisis a technology that's four thousand years old we can't figure it out If the head of the Department of Transportation can't do anything to help transportation, why do we have a government? Why do we exist as a country? It's the same shit of Ted Cruz going, yes, thank you, little baby beef. How Ted Cruz going to Mexico while people were freezing to death in Texas is exactly the same shit. And when Ted Cruz did it, you were able to point it out and go, hey, he's a senator. What's a senator going to do to fix electrical systems? But yet him quitting and going to Mexico to stay warm in a fucking four-star resort, you all understood why that was bad, right? Now, change that to an executive who actually is in charge of that shit. And the point is, he took, they took paid family leave out of Build Back Better. I will ban anyone who thinks that this has anything to do with uh, Pete's identity. You fucking liberal worms. Do you know the difference? Buttigieg gets this as an option. Other people don't. Given how immensely unqualified Buttigieg is, taking time off and letting someone else take control might actually be better. Vacation is not the same as fraternity leave, but I also see your point about how an executive needs to have accountability in their job. Does anyone think Pete shouldn't have been working from home that whole time? You know him and his husband? I mean, like, listen, it's, 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 it's a class thing. He got paid family leave because of his class position. And he... <laughs> And he has the ability to afford all the help he needs. It's absurd. Liberals' favorite mental exercise is figuring out what a certain politician can't do and why they can't do it, and then slinging id politics accusations in every direction when everyone gets mad at that politician for not doing the thing. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't qualified to begin, so I doubt he'll make a difference, but it's about the optics, the idea that someone in his position would have take time off during a massive crisis. Ted doesn't have a replacement or a chain of command. The hill that he has, he has, has it, and others don't, is a val- It's not a valid point, you f dipshit. Maybe government officials should get the same amount of time off as a normal person. Families in the country with way less privilege and money managed with only one parent staying home. If you think that Pete Buttigieg specifically needs and deserves time off while he's supposed to be in charge of a massive global economic crisis, you're an idiot. You're absolute- Well, that's the lib liberal hegemony. That's, a, that's the liberal hegemony. A general doesn't actually do much in an actual battle, but... It's like, it's like, it's so funny because like... People have this belief that the government can't do things. Guys, you, if you think the federal government of the United States of America can't do things you have liberal brain rot i think what we need to do is talk about china a little bit because they're the only currently existing i'm now i'm now so stunlocked that i can't even i can't even believe it's real do you guys understand something i want to explain something to you maybe i haven't taught you well enough so it's my fault is okay let's talk about this you think Pete Buttigieg can't do anything? Nanjing, after its 190 mile per hour journey across China. On board are people going to work or seeing friends in the city. They're passengers making use of what's now the biggest high speed rail network anywhere in the world. Now chat, when did they start building China's high speed rail network? What year did they start? Anybody in chat know? The answer is 2007. But that statement doesn't really come anywhere near close to explaining what this actually is. Two thirds of the world's entire high speed rail network is now in China. They did that in 13 years. Do you think they did it from magic? It's the second largest economy in the world, and they're significantly smaller than the US. You think we can't do shit so we can't, so that you don't hold these people accountable. Pete Buttigieg is a f failure. In the 12 years since its first line opened, the 12. country has dramatically outbuilt every other nation and now plans to double the size of its high-speed network in just the next I'll give you an example. I believe China has 27,000 miles of high-speed rail. 
I think the UK has like a couple hundred Dean years. Travel times have fallen, the country's economy has boomed, cities have exploded, and the rest of the world's been left wondering how they'll ever come close to building at such an insatiable pace. This is the unstoppable high-speed growth of China's high-speed rail network, explained. They're coming out with a 300 or 400 kilometer an hour train. 400 kilometer an hour train is coming out in China. There are high speed rail networks around the world, but then there's the network in China. It's an insanely large web of track that's helped to ignite an economic powerhouse. In little over a decade, the country's built enough high speed lines to almost circle the globe, and the system welcomed 1.7 billion passengers in 2019 alone. To put that into context, the UK built a high-speed rail line between London and the Channel Tunnel in the 2000s that's equivalent to 0.2% of China's current network. The new HS2 line was first proposed in 2009, and phase one of it is due to complete in 2033. The US has one high-speed line in the northeast, but it's arguably not actually high-speed, and California's new line won't open before 2029. Of course, the approach to high-speed yeah, rail in happen. these countries is very different, and we'll come back to that a little later on. To properly understand how this jaw-dropping network came to be and where it's headed, you need to look at the story of modern China. I never said China was the wealthiest nation. I said we were, and we're fucking losers, and we can't... People think you can't do anything. People are coming in here and telling me that I shouldn't be mad at Pete Buttigieg for being a loser and failure because what can he do since the 1980s the country has roughly doubled its gdp every eight years more than 800 million people have been lifted out of poverty and between the year 2000 and 2018 over 47 percent of the population has risen to middle class status cities few had heard of 20 years ago are now vast metropolises across the country skyscrapers soar above your head Factories teem with activity, and trade booms. This isn't all down to high-speed rail. The fast lines have played a huge role in accelerating the country's growth since 2008, but before that, train systems were under pressure. Faced with buckling infrastructure, state planning for high-speed rail began in 1990, and the first line between Beijing and Tianjin opened in 2008, cutting travel between the two cities from 70 minutes to 30. Other lines were quickly introduced, linking the cities of Shanghai, Wuhan, Chengdu, and more. Initial trains were imported or built under technology transfer agreements with foreign train makers. But since then, Chinese engineers have become leaders in the field. The country now has the world's longest high-speed rail line between Beijing and Guangzhou, the world's fastest high-speed line between Beijing and Shanghai, and the world's first commercial maglev line reaching a top speed of 267 miles an hour. Okay. This is China overlaid on the United States. All right. China overlaid on the United States. Makes sense? Now let's go back to the high-speed rail network. And the world's first commercial in Beijing from Libreum trains were important. So this is this is 2017. This is this is old. They've got a whole bunch more now. This would be like high speed rail basically connecting Chicago to Miami, LA. Like this is embarrassing, man. Initial trains were imported or built under technology transfer agreements with foreign train makers. But since then, Chinese engineers have become leaders in the We're field. We're not changing the title. The country now has the world's longest high-speed rail line between Beijing and Guangzhou, the world's fastest high-speed line between Beijing and Shanghai, and the world's first commercial maglev line, reaching a top speed of 267 miles an hour. As of 2021, China's high-speed rail network stretches for 37,900 kilometers, while its entire rail track length runs for over 141,000 kilometers. 
fucking loser country, By 2035, man. the high-speed network will have grown to 70,000 kilometers, and the total rail length will extend over... Okay. Look at that. That would be... I mean, look at that, man. Here is a 2021 map. Uh, that's not... That's all the railways. That's not the high speed. Uh, here it is. Thank you. In China, you know, this is where their population is concentrated, right? The high speed rail is when the population is concentrated. This is, you know, smaller populations out west. The point is, is that it's got complete coverage. They did it in 10 years, man. 10, 15 years. And you people have such liberal brains. You're like, Mike, what can the transportation secretary do? What can we do? How about we have a country uh, where people expect things to happen and get mad when they don't? Southwest China is a Gobi Desert. Yeah, exactly. 200,000 kilometers. What can the guy in charge do? He'll just take some time off. China's case Mike, for high speed rail. Are you against family leave? I'm against family leave for cabinet secretaries. There, I said it. That's my position. No family leave for cabinet secretaries. Continues to strengthen. The lines it's built have drastically shortened journey times, improved safety, reduced carbon emissions. Mike, don't you want a millennial uh, to be a cabinet secretary? Not if it's Pete Buttigieg. Chinese people from rural or less developed areas to access the country's massive cities. Studies have also found that tourism increases by around 20% in provinces connected to the high-speed network. Listen how the plans for expansion are intended to build on this success, but also to address the country's wealth discrepancy problem. The rich coastal region cities of Beijing and Shanghai have a far higher nominal per capita income, sometimes more than double or quadruple that of those living inland. Beijing hopes new lines will grow more regional hubs. By 2035, all cities with a population of more than 200,000 will be connected by rail, and those with more than half a million people will have access to high-speed rail. The strategy also helps Beijing with its desire to unify the country. A standard rail line was built from Beijing to Tibet despite its small population, while a high-speed line links the capital directly with Hong Kong, a special administrative region. In the central government's own words, the high-speed line to the northwestern Zhenjing province, native home to the Uyghurs, was partly built to promote what it calls ethnic unity. So how has China built such a massive high-speed rail network? while other countries have been left standing. The first reason is demand. The US has eight cities with more than five million people. India has seven, Japan has three, the UK just one. China has 14. The Shanghai- Yeah, but if those people can't afford to ride the train, who gives a shit? A Beijing line alone <laughs> serves more than 300 million people. This unprecedented rate of urbanization, combined with rising household incomes, creates a need- I mean, the US has seven, so we should have s half as much of high-speed rail as they do. Oh wait, we have none. ...for the fast delivery of people and goods across the country. I do understand your point. However, how can anyone in the US government correct the supply chain issue? This is due to COVID-19 disrupted a worldwide system of private companies in other countries. Well, most of the uh, crisis is due to the fact that our ports can't process the ships that are sitting. See, it's a U.S. problem. And by slow, by having ships stand idle at our shores, they're not shipping other stuff, right? So it creates a supply chain. So it's actually our problem that is cascading across the world because we have the ships sitting idle at our shores. We're the problem. And so people are like, well, Mike, can you solve this specific thing? Okay, fine. I'll give you an example. Empty containers were only allowed to be stacked too high in, in, uh, uh, according to regulations within California. And so they were running out of containers, uh, empty container space within uh, LA and Long Beach. So they changed the, they just recently changed the regulations to allow it to be stacked four high. The point is, that we're, we have a shortage of truckers. Okay, have we, have we activated the National Guard? Have we uh, done, created a program to speed train new truckers? Have we um, offered people big raises? Have we gone, gotten in the room, all the Teamsters and all the trucking companies and say, 
hey, what do we need to do to maximize the number of truckers working again? Can we bring people out of retirement with bonuses? Can we uh, build, open more trucking schools? What the f*** are they doing? Absolutely nothing. I, I just showed you four ideas right off the top of my head. The point is they're not doing shit. And if that wouldn't work, it doesn't matter. The outcome is their responsibility. The outcome is their responsibility. If you don't understand that the outcome is your responsibility as a government official, you're a f***ing idiot. That's why they're going to lose the election, because they want to make excuses and not results. I can't believe I have to explain that this is liberal brain rot. I'm showing you a country that is built literally tens of thousands of miles of high-speed rail crisscrossing a country as large as the continental United States, and they've done it in less than a, a 15 years, and people are telling me they can't unload container ships that are already at your port. And that it's okay that they just take vacations that they won't give to the proles. At the same time, China's yeah, heavily congested airspace fire. often causes yeah. flight delays, and high-speed rail is not only cheaper, but also hugely more reliable. The high levels of demand allow the Chinese government to make massive investments in high-speed technology and infrastructure. The sheer scale of the country's ambition, combined with a credible plan to build such a big network, and the fact that nearly all of China's rail is controlled by the state-owned China Railway Corporation, means that high volumes of materials can be ordered... Wait a and minute, state-owned? State-owned corporation? Wait a minute! That's not capitalism! Sp supposedly there's a shortage of some kind of sensor needed for tractor trailers so i assume that they've nationalized that sensor and they're building uh government-owned factories to put out as many of those sensors as possible juiced at once the country's also standardized nearly china built a f covid uh hospital in like a week what is the U does the u.s have the capability to do anything every aspect of construction Embankments, track, viaducts, electrification and communication systems are all the same, no matter where you are in the country. This lowers construction costs, enables off-site manufacturing and cuts build times. In Europe, high-speed rail costs around 25 to 39 million US dollars per kilometer, while in the US it's around 56 million dollars per kilometer. In China, it's down at 17 million dollars, up to two-thirds lower than other countries. Of course, there's a few things that bring the cost of building down. In 2021, more than 40% of China's population, around 600 million people, still live on less than $5 a day, and labor costs are low. Land acquisition is also easier than elsewhere, partly due to the country's geography and political system. The process of moving AKA, people- AKA, they can take land from people for the common good without being dragged through the courts for 20 years out of the way of a new line in the US accounts for around 20% of the project cost. In China, that's less than 8%. Yeah, they don't pay the, the high-speed rail construction workers are not making $5 a day. He's saying there's poor people in China. There's a lot of poor people in America, too. They have nothing to do with high-speed rail construction. It's a red herring argument. The country's also kept high-speed rail fares low for the average person. Tickets are a quarter of the cost of other nations. Interestingly, this often means foregoing making any profit on the lines constructed. Instead, China sees the social and wider economic impact of its high-speed network as more valuable. Oh, wait, wait, you mean they're building the high-speed rail for the purpose of increasing interconnectivity and positive externalities of developing their country? They're, they're building infrastructure not for strict profit of the infrastructure operators, but actually for the greater social good? What idiots! As he took office in February 2021, U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said he'd like to see America lead the world in high-speed rail. Then he took what? a vacation. While it may be possible to set the country on a course towards that during his term, the chances of the U.S. overtaking China by building 70,001 kilometers of track in the next two decades feels remote. Though high-speed rail may see- Jeff Smooth says, of course, that I was getting at the fact that Buttigieg is the latest in a long line of transportation secretaries being completely f***ing useless. The fact that the right managed to get so many motherfuckers in this chat 
to buy into the failures of U.S. governance is wild to me. And people people tried to imply that I was attacking Pete Buttigieg's uh, identity by making a nerd voice that I make constantly for everyone. Whenever I have an interlocutor I make fun of, I make the ner a nerdy voice, which is pretty much my voice. It's just my voice. So, mother homophobically thinking that nerdy voices equals gay voice, which is just my voice, by the way. I have a very fey voice. And? And? I hope, you know, I can hear, you can hear me, like, hear, listen to me talk, like, come on, man. The best the U.S. could dream of is something like this sort of a monorail that crashes itself because the rails are not aligned because the contractor cheaped out on everything. Yeah. Seem out of reach to many, the current economic crisis could be an opportunity. In 2008, China responded to the global financial crisis by investing heavily in high-speed infrastructure, stimulating its economy and creating jobs. Today, that network is the lifeblood of this huge, ambitious, beautiful, and complex country. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M. And so what I want to what I wanted to show with people is quite frankly the idea that you, we he can't do anything. What could a transportation secretary do? Is some of these minor, it's the liberal hegemony in your brain that needs to be destroyed. You need to start having sky high expectations like, hey, we have an entire high speed rail co uh, system covering the country in 15 years. We should stimulate our economy and create jobs by investing in green energy and combating climate change, you know, like a Green New Deal or something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. China is now richer than the US. <laughs> Global wealth rose to 514 trillion in 2020 from 156 trillion in 2000. We are now wealthier than we've ever been. A Jan Mischke, a partner at McKinsey Global Institute, told Bloomberg, although China's wealth grew by over 17 times, U.S. wealth rose to 90 trillion. China overtakes U.S. as world's richest. The study examined the balance sheets of 10 countries representing over 60% of world income. Okay, well, we'll have to repeat. We'll have to get another article that's better than this one because it sucks. They inflate their GDP from real estate and housing, which no one lives in, is an on track for a country economic collapse. See, Evergrande. Yeah, I, I do think that real estate uh, bubbles are a big problem, without a doubt. But you can't debate that they have the largest high-speed rail network in the fucking country. Problem I, just, I just want, you know, it's so frustrating to me when I look out at American liberals and people who think they're leftists, most of which are liberals, and they say, what can a Pete Buttigieg do for transportation? What does the transportation secretary do? And it's just like, amazing. Was that chatter implying that the US GDP isn't inflated by speculative real estate? Exactly. I'm not debating that at all. China kicks the USA when it comes to high-speed rail and other things, but when it comes to measuring overall GDP, the Chinese are vastly overstating their, well, estimating their net wealth via real estate. You know that they have like global manufacturing, right? If there's any country that's overinflated by speculative and fictitious capital, it's the United States of America. For herself. Uh, and there are times where she's just been attacked uh, in completely ridiculous ways. You know, last week when she was in France and she said, the plan, like that, she said, the plan. Mm. And so, suddenly it was that she was making a fake French accent, which I don't I know. Some of us aren't American with like an explanation, not automatically American liberal. So basically, America. If it's if you are not in New York or California or Texas and Florida, the country is pretty much in full on collapse mode. That's reality. You know, maybe maybe Seattle, there's a you know, there's maybe 10 cities that are not in collapse mode and the rest of this country is in full on collapse mode and wealth is crashing, life expectancy is crashing, job opportunities are crashing that are actually valuable. It's a bunch of low-skill, low-wage jobs everywhere. That's America now. Manufacturing is gone. People are in services where they get paid lower. They're ununionized. Or they're in education or healthcare. This country consumes goods produced overseas. It's overwhelmingly a speculative bubble. Meanwhile, China, on the other hand, has speculation without a doubt, no doubt about it, 
and there is wealth concentration that's problematic. But they also have the world's global manufacturing hub. They have massive infrastructure investments, housing investments. They are investing in their own country and growing gangbusters pace. They lead the world in high-speed rail. They lead the world in uh, renewable energy technology. They lead the world in manufacturing expertise. They, they are leading the world in pretty much everything that matters except military tech. America moving toward a service economy and away from manufacturing powerhouse. That's good for you. has been told since I was like 10. And that was terrible for workers because service workers earn much less than manufacturing workers. And, and so when I laugh, at, you know, and, and the United States of America used to do things like this. We had something known as the Tennessee Valley Authority. We had the National Highway System. Those were centrally planned ideas like rural electrification. People in rural areas didn't have electricity in America until FDR made that happen. You know, America, one of our biggest advantages is that we had a postal service that was nationally run. That helped unite in the country. It was infrastructure and required infrastructure investment. The United States of America used to do those type of things, but now we don't. Now we have people that are like, how can we take the boxes off the ships at our port? It's so hard. How do we take the boxes off the ships that are at our ports already? Oh no, what a crisis. A technology that's 4,000 years old. We can't figure it out. That's our crisis right now. And when I'm like, hey, probably the guy in charge of that shouldn't take, you know, paid family leave when everybody else can't, when the Democrats strip it out of their bill, seems like a pretty bad optically thing to do, right? Is to be like, yeah, uh, you know how your oil prices are going through the roof and your gasoline is doubled and like you can't get the, your, you can't order anything, get it done, uh, delivered within months. Hey, you know how everything is prices are going insane? Yeah, the guy in charge of that is just taking some time off. Oh, can I take time off for paid family leave? I have a newborn. No, you can't, peasant. That might be a problem.